Are we feeling hopeful this morning? You shouldn't be. Let me explain why. We have a bunch of very powerful people in Glasgow lying, literally. And I'll tell you why that. Because for 30 years, we have been having this conversation. We started in 1992 in Rio. The Rio conventions came out of it. And every time we find a new terminology, now it's the, the flavor of the day is net zero and billions. We don't talk about millions anymore. Let me take you back to 2015, and I was a part of that process, so I know what I'm talking. The New York Declaration on Forests, some of the world's best corporations lined up, say that we're going to reduce deforestation, we'll stop it by 2020. 2020 has come and gone. What has the New York Declaration on Forests achieved? Nothing. We have to stop lying to ourselves. Because the time when, oh, the world is burning, but my country is fine. My country is burning, but my community is fine. My community is burning, but hey, you know, I'm on high ground. I'm all right. The house is about to burn down. We are at 1.2 degrees of global warming already. So not very far from 1.5, which was supposed to be by the end of the century. And we, every decade, we add another 1.1 degrees. So at the scale of acceleration that is happening at this time, I would be surprised actually if we are still at 1.2 or 1.3 by 2030. That's what is happening. And then the UNEP emissions gap report, it's a flagship report that comes out every year that tells us what's the promise and where actually we are headed. So the emissions reduction that we need as a species, let's stop fooling ourselves that we are out to save the planet. The planet does not need saving. It has been here for billions of years, without us, with us. It is about saving ourselves, the humans, and all the species that we'll take down with us. And by the way, we've already taken down a million of them out of the eight million. So that's where we are. But why am I hopeful? I'm hopeful because we are in a city, I mean, I, I was at the Royal Geographical Society the other day. I was watching at a little scale model of Mount Everest. Before these three gentlemen that climbed up Mount Everest, actually they had a plan. And they came back and briefed the geographers on how it went and every explorer to the new worlds that went out in those days, I'm talking about a few hundred years ago, they planned there, they went out, they came back and reported. And that's how we learned. So it is within us to do this, but not by ignoring reality. I was, uh, um, the week before I was in India, at the National Stock Exchange of India, I was hosting a dear friend of mine, Cyril Guch, who's the founder of Parlay for the Oceans and a transformative thinker. So I asked the audience, how did your credit card taste in the last meal? And they were like all bewildered, what is this guy talking? I said, well, sorry, I didn't intend to offend you, but actually, you eat one credit card worth of microplastic in your food every week throughout the year. That's the minimum. If you eat more, you're actually having a few more credit cards worth of microplastic. We have put nine billion tons of plastic into the environment since we started doing this. Every year, we add 300 million tons of plastic, which is, by the way, equivalent to the entire biomass, human biomass in the world. But we are static, you know? We go away, somebody new comes in, and our weight is static. The plastic weight just keeps adding every year. Another 300 million tons, another 300 million tons. And we tell ourselves, oh, we are amazing. We found this great thing, which is in everything. I was just trying to have a cup of tea, and I didn't actually, because the tea is in plastic bags. So that's the challenge. We have created a world for ourselves that is not sustainable. It is time we recognize that. Governments will do their part, but a problem created by eight billion people is not going to be solved by a few governments and a few corporations. We as individuals have to really change the way we think. Every little thing, flip the switch, you step out of the room. Don't take more food on the table if you don't want to eat. I mean, you know, it's, not, it's not difficult. It's just give up our egos and our vanities Think about survival as we would do when life is at stake. So let me close by sharing an amazing story from India. 
uh, I'm involved in uh, supporting a program in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Women farmers, they're shunning agrochemicals and pesticides, and they're taken to natural farming, which is, you know, in a way comparable to what you would call biodynamic farming in Germany, and, uh, and what would you call regenerative agriculture, uh, Masanobu Fukuoka in Japan. So they've just picked up the threads from here and there and some ancient practices from India, and they're doing it. The input costs drop by 80% because they're not using chemical fertilizers any, anymore. Public health benefits are exponential over the last five years. A million of them have already converted. And when we talk about system scale shifts, this is the kind of things we need to start thinking. If you take the steel industry, the auto industry, the IT and the IT enabled services industry, and all the ancillaries, it employs 40 million people globally. Agriculture employs a billion people globally. That's building prosperity at the grassroots. Let's put money where the impact is. And soil has the ability to store three times as much carbon as in the atmosphere. If we want to take it out, bring it down from 420 parts per million, which it is at this time, which is where we were three million years ago, we really need to look at, stop talking solar, solar, solar. Solar is great, but it has already found its market and its place. We need to look at agriculture. That's going to save the planet. That's going to bring back the carbon, store it in the soil. Let's switch from soil chemistry to soil biology. And, and we'll be standing here perhaps in 10 years' time patting each other in the back that we really did something that saved our planet. Thank you.